Hey everybody, Josh here. So navigation apps like Google Maps and Apple Maps take you from point A to point B. That is their primary function, but these days they are a lot more than that. For example, you can bookmark your favorite restaurants, save places that you wanna go, check out reviews, and even photos of the food and the menu beforehand to make sure you're going to the right place. So. Which one's better, Google Maps or Apple Maps? And I know there's Waze and other apps out there, but I'm just gonna be focusing on Google Maps and Apple Maps because they are the most popular. Now first, let's talk about UI UX. How do these apps look and how do they function? Now in each of these apps home screens, we can see that they visually look very different. With Apple Maps, we see a clear emphasis on the bottom portion of the app, which is typically where your thumb is. Whereas on Google Maps, we actually get the opposite with the search bar and a bunch of shortcuts at at the top. Another difference that you'll see is the amount of buttons on the screen. On Google, we see a couple of buttons that help us discover what's around us with just a quick tap, whereas with Apple, it does require us to tap search to reveal these features. And this is sort of the same story with the navigation screen. On Google Maps, we get much more information with a bunch of street names and easily accessible shortcuts. On Apple Maps, you won't see that many street names and the graphics are just a little more simplified with less buttons on screen. Now, granted, these buttons on Google Maps are actually pretty useful. For example, on Google Maps, if we wanted to stop the navigation, it's just one tap of the big red button. Whereas on Apple, it requires two taps. To add a stop, you can do that with one tap on Google and two taps on Apple. And again, to start your navigation, something that we do all the time, it's two taps on Apple and one tap on Google. So this is something that we see in Apple's design language as they clearly emphasize form over function. So how something looks over how how something actually works. You see, Apple doesn't want to crowd the screen with a bunch of visual clutter. They like their stuff to be nice and clean, even though it might require more work for the user in the end. Now, one thing that I do think Apple does amazing and possibly even better than Google is the amount of detail that they put into their maps. If you just zoom in around the maps, you'll notice things like trees, lane lines, crosswalks, bus lanes, and even bike lanes, and I'm sure I'm missing a bunch more. This can be a very powerful tool when exploring a route or just trying to explore your town, and it just looks really nice. So in terms of UI UX, I'm gonna give Apple a point for the better user interface and Google for the better user experience, which puts the score at one to one. Now, one important aspect to any navigation app is its voice commands. In 1000 feet, turn left onto Saratoga Avenue. Go past this light. Then at the next one, turn left. In 400 feet, turn right onto Barrymore Drive. At the next stop sign, turn right. On Google Maps, they'll give you directions like turn right or turn left in 100 feet. Whereas on Apple Maps, you'll actually get context clues like turn right after the stoplight or turn right at the next stop sign. These instructions actually feel a lot more intuitive for me. So in terms of voice commands, I'm gonna give a point to Apple. Now, what about the actual navigation? Which app gets you to your destination quickly and reliably? I remember when Apple Maps first launched in 2012, it was basically a joke because it wasn't reliable and it would basically just tell you that you've reached your destination when you were just in the middle of the road. So that wasn't ideal. Now for context, Google Maps actually launched in 2005. So they have a whole seven years on Apple Maps. But the question that we need to ask is, has Apple Maps finally caught up? And the answer is maybe. I think this is gonna be one of those things that is gonna vary from region to region. But what I can say is that there's actually been two instances where Apple Maps has actually provided better instructions than Google Maps in my area. Take a look at these two route predictions and tell me if you see a problem with Google Maps. Now, this is my regular commute to my gym, and if you caught it, you can see that, yes, Google Maps is having me go past my exit turn make a U-turn and then turning right into my destination versus on Apple, they just have me turning left off of the expressway and into the parking lot for my gym. And then example number two, this is a similar story in San Diego when I was visiting my sister. Again, Google Maps has me going all the way past my exit on this expressway where 
Really, there is a left turn lane that you can utilize, so I'm not sure what's going on with Google Maps in these two instances. But yeah, I'm just showing this to show you that it can vary from app to app and from region to region. So yeah, maybe leave a comment down below with your experiences of where you're located and which app tends to work better for you. But I'm gonna have to say this one's a tie, which puts our score at two to three. Next up, let's talk about research and information, something that's really important when you're trying to to figure out where to go for lunch or dinner. Let's say you have a restaurant's profile pulled up. While Apple Maps and Google Maps both have useful information in this screen, like the restaurant's hours, a phone call button, and how far the restaurant is, Google completely dominates Apple in everything else. Since Apple outsources their reviews from Yelp, their integration really isn't great. Not only do you only get a few photos on Apple Maps, when you tap into a photo, it actually brings you out of Apple Maps and into Yelp. Also, in order to read more than the suggested reviews, you guessed it, you'll also have to go into the Yelp app. On Google Maps, not only do you get a bunch more photos, but you also get some very helpful categories built right into the app, like food photos, exterior and interior photos, and even menu photos, which helps you scope out the price and the offerings at that restaurant. In addition, you can also look through all of the reviews and search through the reviews if you wanted to know about a specific menu item or something about the establishment. Also on Google Maps, if you scroll down, you'll also get a very helpful graph that shows you how busy a place is at that given moment. So for this one, I'm gonna give Google the clear win here, which puts it at a tie at three to three. Next up, let's talk about discovery. How easy is it to find a new restaurant or a coffee shop? On Apple Maps, we do get guides from different publications, whereas on Google Maps, we get this sad feed of user contributed photos, which I've actually never used any of these features now that I think of it. The way that I like to find new restaurants is actually through the categorization and filtering system. So on either map, after selecting a category, you're actually presented with a list of options. To further narrow your search, you can also filter down your results based on a variety of factors. On Apple Maps, I especially like the Apple Pay toggle. This definitely comes in handy when you're visiting something like a food truck or a barber shop. Overall, I'd have to say that discoverability favors Google here. With their built-in photos and crowdsource reviews, it's just much easier to vet an establishment with the information right there at your fingertips rather than having to dig through it in another app. But I will say that in general, I do think that these two apps can be a lot better with discoverability and recommending you certain restaurants or new coffee shops. In this day and age with algorithms and machine learning, I think that they can utilize AI to sort of figure out what we like. Similar to how Spotify has a Discover Weekly playlist, I think Maps apps could do something similar. In fact, Google has actually implemented this compatibility percentage, which is quite interesting. Anyway, in terms of discoverability, I'm gonna have to give the point to Google here, which puts them in the lead at four to three. Now, what about the social side of things? Maybe you've found a restaurant that you really like that you wanna share with your friends. With either app, you can pretty easily do so via SMS. However, Google is the clear winner here as Google Maps is cross-platform compatible. Not only can you access Google Maps from Android, you can also download the the Google Maps app on iOS and access it on Mac and PC. But yeah, for that reason, I'm gonna give the point to Google Maps. Now next up, we have bookmarking and creating lists. So by default, Google actually displays your bookmarks and your favorites right on the app itself. And if you have a lot of these, it can start to crowd up your map and feel a little bit messy. Thankfully, you can hide them from your map pretty easily. On Apple Maps, it's a pretty similar situation except Apple calls them guides, not sure why. And yeah, you can make your own guides for your favorite coffee shops or lunch spots or whatever you want. On Google Maps though, you may have used this feature where you can share a list with your friends and then collaborate like on the computer for, let's say if you're going on a vacation together and you wanna add your own bookmarks and itinerary, it's pretty nice to have that feature. But yeah, for this section, I'm gonna give it a tie, even though I do think that Google Maps has a little more functionality, but 
At the end of the day, you can do pretty much the same thing with each app. All right, next up, let's talk about bonus, bonus features. features. These might be great for power users, or maybe if you haven't heard of these features, you might start using them. So first, let's talk about location tracking. On the iPhone, you do get the Find My Friends app, which allows you to see where your friends are if they've shared their location with you, as well as your belongings and like your AirTags. But it is a separate app, whereas on Google Maps, your friends are actually displayed on the map itself. In my humble opinion, I do think that it would be really awesome if Apple could implement Find My Friends within Apple Maps. It just makes a lot of sense for me and would honestly get me to use Apple Maps more. In fact, just about a week ago, I was out having lunch with my friends and I was on Google Maps and I actually saw that another friend was right across the street from me. So I was able to call him and we were able to meet up and talk for like 30 minutes and it was great. But yeah, as the Apple Maps app currently stands, it doesn't have any of these location tracking features, so I'm gonna give the point to Google here. Another great feature that Google Maps has is called Timeline. What this tool does is basically give you a breakdown of where you went on each day, how you got there, whether by bicycle, by car, or by walking, and a bunch of useful information. Now, why is this useful or helpful in any way? For example, let's say you went on a road trip or a vacation last year and you're having a hard hard time remembering which coffee shop you went to that you really liked. If you just go into timeline and select that date, you can pretty easily see all of the places that you went to that day. This tool has helped me remember what meal I had two weeks ago, as well as helped me for tax season, being able to find all of my work related commutes with all of the mileage displayed right there was really helpful. So yeah, if you can get past the commitment of giving Google your information, then I guess um, that's a really helpful feature and a point for Google. Now, what about Apple Maps? And one thing I like about Apple Maps is its ability to display your map on the lock screen. Especially on a long drive or like a road trip, your battery is gonna drain so fast because of that navigation app being open and the screen brightness probably at max because you're in the sun. So instead of the screen staying on and killing your battery, you can actually just lock your screen and whenever something is needed from you, like you need to make a turn or exit the highway, your iPhone screen will actually light up and the direction will be right there. Another feature that I think is really underrated with Apple Maps is its street view. And it's surprising because Apple Maps didn't even have street view until 2019. Not only can you switch lanes in Apple Maps street view, you can also engage this split screen view, which makes it really easy to tell which direction you're facing and is just overall a nicer and more pleasant experience when compared to Google Maps. And finally, the last feature I'll talk about is offline maps. So Google Maps does have offline maps, whereas Apple Maps doesn't even support it. So a clear win for Google there, you can actually download offline maps for any region and it'll tell you how much space it's gonna take up on your phone. Not only that, if you're visiting a national park, it'll actually have download offline maps right there as a button, which makes it super simple and convenient. So with a final score of nine to six, Google Maps takes the win as the overall best maps app. Woo, big surprise, not really. Now I do think that Apple Maps is getting better each day and with each iOS software update, I do think that they're gonna be adding more competitive features and hopefully rounding out the competition a little bit more. And despite the fact that Google Maps clearly has more functionality as it is right now, I actually know people who use both apps because with Apple Maps, you just get the more intuitive voice commands, which I really like and just the better graphics and better UI. But yeah, leave a comment down below with your thoughts. Which app is better in your region? And will Apple Maps ever catch up? Leave a like on your way out. Consider subscribing to the channel for more tech content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.